As the U.S. college admission bribery allegations continue to expand, they include high-profile celebrities and wealthy families. The bribery scam used athletics to guarantee spots at top schools for the children of wealthy parents. Anthony Jack is an assistant professor at Harvard University, and he's also the author of The Privileged Poor, How Elite Colleges Are Failing Disadvantaged Students. And he joins us now from Cambridge, Massachusetts. Anthony, thank you for joining us. Uh, thank you for having me. So first, I just want to get your initial reaction to the widespread level of this scandal when, when it was first announced by authorities. You know, it gave evidence of something that many of us knew about, heard about, talked about, but did, could not actually say exactly how it happened. Um, it goes back to that old saying, what happens in the dark finally comes into the light. And I equated it to a tip in, a tip, the tip of the iceberg. And I mean that it's a great analogy because it's the part that we finally got to see, the part that, you know, rose above the surface for us to look at, dissect, and really see just how really bad the process was. And, you know, as time has somewhat passed since we've heard the initial allegations that came forward uh, from mm -hmm. authorities in Boston, as you're saying that this may be just the tip of the iceberg and that you had your own suspicions previously. So what is it that you perhaps experienced before all of this uh, came out into the open? I mean, two, in two ways. Um, one, this is a continuation of things that wealthy parents have been doing for their children since they were born. Like, to me, this is opportunity hoarding 101. These are wealthy individuals trying to, trying to amass every single resource or opportunity for their children at the expense of other people. The neighborhoods they choose, the schools they choose, these parents are the same parents who pay $1,000 an hour for tutors for the SAT or to or to get people to write their children's essays. Like, this is a long process in the making. This isn't something that started just in students' 11th or 12th grade year. So I think we, I think we should put that on the table. This is not an anomaly. This is just a part that crosses the, the legal, illegal boundary. But on the other side of things, the children of these people, when they get into school, they're oftentimes the first people who say, I got in on my own merit, and all of you are taking spots of people who truly deserve to be here. You are an affirmative action baby, or you somehow got in only because of your demographic group, whatever that is, maybe because you're black or you're Latinx or you're low income. And so it's, it's you know, I, I look at it from both sides of, um, from both sides. And now we know that in the days ahead, in the weeks ahead, there will be hearings and those named uh, in these allegations will be appearing uh, in court as well. And in terms of those uh, 50 people, really, who are accused to be connected with mm -hmm. this, did you ever encounter this sort of activity? Did you ever watch something like this happen? Did you ever see these sorts of conversations mm -hmm. take place? I mean, we're talking about exam proctors, coaches in sports teams, et cetera, and of course, parents. The thing is, I saw the just one step on the legal side of things. I went to school with people whose parents who paid an exorbitant amount of money for the SAT coaches, the people who basically wrote the application from start to finish, who did all of those things. So I, I was never expo exposed to the people who completely broke the law, right? Um, but I, I was exposed to people who played the game and used their money to play it to their children's advantage. And I mean, this is remarkable just how upfront and matter of fact these people were. Like, there's a front door, there's a back door. I created a side door. Like, there was no hiding it. They knew what they were doing from, uh, from the beginning, what they, were trying, what they were trying to accomplish. So do you think then that this will be sort of a moment of truth when it comes to making institutions more honest? To be honest with you, I don't know, because my life has told me that money talks and privilege walks. Like, I honestly have no idea just the magnitude of a shift that this can be. On my, on my more hopeful days, I hope we actually have a very intentional conversation about should legacy admissions continue? How should we do preference for athletes if we should do it at all? Um, because athletics was an avenue through which, it, through which these parents exploited the system because of the power of coaches and helping students get in. But on the other side of things, we've seen, we've seen time and time again in the criminal justice system where if you can pay to have a lawyer, 
Just that difference, not even a good lawyer, just pay to have a lawyer, you get off. Um, and to be honest with you, I look forward to seeing what they are found guilty on. Because if this is kind of like an Al Capone situation where despite the magnitude of what happened um, in his criminal enterprise, he got caught for tax evasion, what are these parents going to be found guilty of and what will they be punished for? Um, because there's a whole bunch of things um, that they did that highlighted the, the, the vast inequalities in, 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 in America. Think about the health care, access to health care. Many of many citizens um, in the United States do not have access to ad adequate health care. And these people were paying doctors to give fa um, false, false diagnoses to get extra time on tests. Think about that kind of inequality. I want to know, before I put my chips anywhere, where are the guilty verdicts going to fall? A lot of really interesting and important questions to consider. Thank you for your time today, Anthony. All right, thank you for having me. That's Anthony Jack, author and assistant professor at Harvard University.